everybody. I'm back again. Um, it's Jennifer from CDA class and we are going to help our students and everyone out there trying to get their national CDA um, with going over this application packet that we call it in our classes. Um, so if you are taking our classes at CDA class, we hope that this is helpful for you. One of your first assignments in module one is to order this application packet and you will pick your area of specialization. So either infant, toddler, preschool, which this one is, or family care if you wanna open your own child care program in your home. Once this arrives, please read over it. And I wanna go over a few pages today that I think will be extremely helpful. Um, today I wanna to go over the resource collection items. They're located on page 12, 13, and 14. There are six of them, and each one of them has a few parts to them. So there is resource collection one, and there are three sections to it. RC 1-1, which is the first section, RC 1-2, which is the second section, and RC 1-3, which is the third. You might have watched our other video about this. We went over this in detail. And I'll make sure that I link it below so that you can watch that video as well. I want to just go over these pieces here quickly though. Um, in a nutshell, this section one, you're going to showcase your first dated CPR certification. So make sure it meets all this criteria. So what I would do for the homework assignment, read parts one, part two, part three, put them together. Part one again is an active first aid and CPR card. The second part here is a weekly menu. So you need to come up with a weekly menu. Listen, if your school has one, great, use that one. You can just send that one to us as part two of this item. If they don't, no worries, just Google search it. Find one that looks good that you think is quality, okay? And then part three, which is on the top of 13, remember there's three parts to this. Uh, this one is the weekly lesson plan. So if you're doing weekly lesson plans already in your school, fabulous. We just need to make sure that it shows what it needs to here. It needs to be a sample of a week. That means Monday through Friday, everybody. And then um, make sure that it also talks about accommodations for children with special needs. This is the biggest issue we have with our students and having their work returned. So make sure that you are saying something to the effect of, for children with special needs, I would number one, number two, number three. If you don't have a child with special needs in your room, think of a child that you know or a special need that your child could have in your classroom and then go from there. Resource item number two is here. It's on the middle of page 13. And there you're gonna create nine learning experiences in your own words. So you can't Google this, but you have to do this one in your own words. And it asks for one in each of these areas, these nine areas. So the first one, science and sensory, and then there's another one for creative arts and another one for mathematics. For each one, you want to number them, one, two, three, all the way to nine. You also then want to put the following in there, the title. So come up with an exciting title for the item. Pick the age group. So is it for three, four, and fives? Is it just for five-year-olds? Is it for infants? Is it for toddler? Write the age group. List the intended goals. So what's the goal of this? What are you hoping that they learn at the end of this? And then the materials. Are you gonna need crayons? Are you gonna need paint? Are you gonna need newspaper? Are you gonna need smocks? What are you gonna need for this activity? And then the process. So step one, you'll do this. Step two, you'll do this. Step three, you'll do this from beginning to end so that somebody else could follow the directions here. Also, the last piece, people forget this one, is discuss why it's developmentally appropriate for that age group. So why is this best for three, four, and five-year-olds versus kid, uh, infants? Or why is this best for infants versus toddlers? So you just wanna give a little blurb on that. Okay, so that's two. Number three, resource collection item number three is on the page, bottom of page, sorry, bottom of page 13. And this one is the bibliography of 10 books. And they give you ideas of what they want those books to be about. They give you six different topics for those 10 books. So it could be about divorce, it could be cultural identity. They give you ideas of what subjects you might consider. 
So bibliography, every single one has to have a title, the author, the publisher, and a short summary, your words. So two, three sentences, this book is about, it teaches children, something like that. Um, I would number them, so I'd make it nice and easy, one through 10, so that we can tell. And I might even list what item of these six that it needs. So is it about divorce? Is it about cultural identity? Help make it easier for that final assessor and for your instructors to make sure that they can read it and understand it and see it very, very clearly. All right, so halfway done those. The next one is resource item number four, and that's located on top of page 14. There are four parts to this one, so be very, very careful. All right, part one, family services. We need a contact for family services. So this should be real, this should be local for your program. So if you are in Georgia, then it should be something locally in Georgia. Um, don't list a New York um, family um, counseling program, it doesn't make sense. Contact information means all of it. Their name, their address, their phone number, their website, and their email. You may want to include a fax number if they have one of those as well. So you want to put all that in there, okay? Just one of them. Just one family counseling program. Part two, this is for translation services. So for families that may not speak English as their primary language, same thing, find one local, the name of the organization, their phone number, their address, their email, their website, and any other information you may have about them. Step three, this one needs two of them, not just one, two. Two agencies in the community, okay? that would help provide services for children with disabilities. All the contact information again, name, address, phone number, email, website. Okay, and part four. You wanna list three more websites, three of them, and a brief description of each one, and provide current information about um, how they help families understand child development. So find ones that have articles, okay? So you're gonna list the website, brief description about them, and an article that they have on their site. Then the second one, same thing, and the third one. So you need three of them, three articles, make sure you do that. Um, make sure they help with child development and understanding that for the age level. So if you are a preschool specialization, it'll be preschool. If you're infant and toddler, you wanna do one for infant and toddler. All right, next one is item number five. Three samples of record keeping forms, okay? So an incident report. You probably have one at your child care center if you're working at a child care center. So just ask for the one there. You can submit that one, okay? The next one is an accident report. Same thing, if you're working at a program, ask for their accident report. The third one is a child observation form. If you do observation forms already in your child care program, use that one. Grab those three forms. Now, let's say your program's not using all of those forms. Go online, simply Google. So you'll Google child care accident report, child care um, uh, emergency contact, I'm um, sorry, um, oh my gosh, I almost forgot. Uh, emergency form, okay? And then the observation form. Now, here's the one that people miss often. With the observation form, you must fill it out. So either do a real observation of a child or fill one out as if you're doing the observation. The only thing to leave out though is the child's name. So you'll write everything, their birth date, everything else, what you observed, but leave their name out, okay? You do not need to fill out the other two forms, the um, instant report form and the emergency form, just the observation form, okay? And then the last one here, number six. Number six has one, two, three parts. It's located in the bottom of page 14. So don't forget all three parts of this. All right, part one. You want the contact information for state licensing in your state. So what's the agency responsible for regulation of childcare in your state? Do a simple Google search. Childcare licensing in Florida or whatever your state is and it will bring up their contact information. We need all of it. Their name, their address, their phone number, their email, their website. 
So you need all the contact information. Okay? And then within that, you also need to make a copy describing the qualifications for personnel. What they mean by this is that you need to say, what do you need to have to be a teacher? Do you need your CDA? You need to put that in there. What does it say for qualifications to be a director? Because maybe that's your goal one day to be a director. You're gonna put that in as well. And assistant teachers too. So assistants, teachers, and directors. Also, you wanna clip out the part on the regulations about group size. So what's the maximum group size for your state? It's different every state. And the last part is the adult child ratio. So in an infant room, how many children to each adult? So some might say three to one, some might say four children to one adult, some might have even higher ones. So you wanna put all those sections. That's just part one. Now we're on to part two. List two national associations. So the one that we usually say to list is NACDA, and that's the National Association for Child Development Associates. Makes sense, you're going to get your CDA. Why not have the information for NACDA? We will link that below in the comments. Uh, I'll link that below for you, so just you know, go down and look that up. And then you need to find one other association. You have to describe the resources they have and the membership opportunities as well. Okay, so two, or three, you can do two and that will meet the requirement. Okay, section three. This one's about legal requirements now. This one, we wanna have the information about re reporting for child abuse and neglect. So, what would you need to do to report child abuse and neglect? What's the phone number? What's the email? What are the steps? What are you supposed to do first, second, and third? So you need to spell that out, okay? Just Google it. Google reporting child abuse and neglect in and then put your state. Then, also, what are the mandatory reporting guidelines? So you're a mandated, mandatory, um, a mandated reporter, sorry, you're a mandated reporter um, being a teacher. So what does it mean? What are the guidelines for your state? Do you have to report in a certain amount of time? How does that work? So you wanna put those guidelines in there for part three. So again, resource collection item number five has three parts. So again, just to recap, once you get this book, read over pages 12, 13, and 14 carefully. I can't say it enough. There are usually more than one item you have to do. So go sentence by sentence and make sure that you're doing that. Hopefully you're liking our videos. We're having fun making them for you. We, we feel like we're being helpful. Hopefully we are. Um, if you have other topics you want us to discuss, definitely, definitely contact us. Put in the comments below um, to join. So you're watching this, you wanna get started and get your national CDA. It's so simple. Just go to our website at www.cdaclass.org. Uh, put it in the, um, the links below so you can get that as well. And um, you'll click the application button, fill out the two page application. It takes about two minutes to complete. Uh, we often have specials where you can start with a payment plan. So go in there, you can read about payment plans or give us a call, we can help too. It's 267-255-8911 and I'll put that information below as well. Um, thanks so much. Hopefully we are helping you get that CDA. We want to see you get that national CDA, help you open your own child care program, help you become a lead teacher, help you open your own child care program in your home. We are very excited to be a part of this. Um, well, thanks so much. Like us, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your coworkers. Have a great one, everybody. Thanks.